What's going on y'all? It's your boy Cool Colas here and you are now tuning into a new video on my channel. But before we get on to the topic for today, I would love for you to do a few things. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, the bell icon so you get notifications for whenever I come out with new content on this channel. And then when you are finished, leave me a comment below and I'll get back to it when the video is finished. For today's topic, I want to talk about Simone Biles' mother. And I want to do a Shea Butter Mama case study on her mother. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Simone Biles is a black female athlete that I am in absolute full support of. She is so super, super talented. I love what she's doing. And like I said, I love this era of phenomenal black female athletes or sassy black female athletes who really are just doing their thing. A lot of them are bringing their excellence and they're also showing that they can be feminine and bring their excellence as well too. Like I said, I'm in full support of that and I love that. I love the aesthetic of Simone Biles. So again, full support of everything that she's doing. With that being said, I'm noticing that a lot of people aren't and it seems like she's getting hit from all angles. Like I said before, a lot of times you had the big backpack who had everything to say about Simone Biles and her uh, marriage and all this other stuff and how, you know, uh, they, they had little comments about, you know, the my man talking about he didn't know who she was before, um, you know, like they actually got together and all this other stuff. So, you know, you had that crowd who was coming after her and you also had the right wing uh, white supremacist crowd that was coming after her as well, too, you know, trying to put her down because she quit and all this other stuff. So now it seems as though she's getting hit from her family, her blood family, that is. And um, I really want to get into and I'll get into her sister in a little bit later, but I really want to get into her mother. As I've said before, when it comes to the Shea Butter Mama class, I'm really saying it so I can show you how it closely relates to the Shea Butter Samba class. But the reality is, is that a more proper term probably would be a Mama Samba or a Blue Magic Mama because Shea Butter is more of a new wave, new kind of movement type of thing. Whereas the Blue Magic thing is an old school type of thing, right? Anyway, so we're going to do a Shea Butter or Shea Butter Mama case study on Simone Biles' mother right now. So for those of you all who do not know, Simone Biles has had a lot of great success. She won three medals. She's done all these great things. And, you know, the, the, the streets are talking. You know, the social media is talking. Everybody has something to say about her success. So she is a very polarizing figure. And now you got this old hag who is trying to bite off of Simone Biles. And we really need to get all into it. The Shea Butter Mama is an individual who is a lot like the person who they teach, that being the Shea Butter Samba, in the fact that they love to be posturing and they love to be impressive and they love to do different stunts so that it gets them attention. And that's essentially what Simone Biles' mother is doing. And if you really look at it closely, she embodies the full picture of what a Shea Butter Mama is. And I've said this before on a previous video, a Shea Butter Mama is a combination of a Shea Butter Samba and an old nigga. If you take those two things and you slap them into one thing, that's when you get the Shea Butter Mama. Now, I'm not exactly sure how old Simone Biles' mother is, but she looks like she could either be in that X or baby boomer territory, but I'm not exactly sure. I probably would put her in X. So for all practical purposes, we're still going to call her Shea Butter Mama because she still exhibits the traits. So one of the things that I've noticed, at least with the Shea Butter Mama, is that she embodies the old nigga spirit quite a bit. And one of the things that she tends to do is she tends to bite off of her successful children in the way that an old nigga loves to bite off of their children who end up becoming a random success. The reason why I say a random success isn't to downplay the success of the kid who they who they do or do not raise, but it's more so to say that 
they didn't give them the tools and the resources and the things that they needed to be an independent success or to be a business success or to be uh, somebody who does something successful for the family. But the kids still made it on their own regardless of them not being equipped with the things that they needed to be able to prosper. And so there's this thing I've talked about before that a lot of the old niggas like to do and Shea Butter Mamas fall into this category. They love to get into this thing that I call the Black Promised Land agenda. What the Black Promised Land agenda is, is when an old nigga basically tries to almost in a way create speculation around their kids. So what they try to do is make them a six or, or try to put them through something that's going to make them a big success or hopefully make them a big success. So an example of that is uh, when you have, you know, these uh, young male athletes who, you know, have their parents who push them. Sometimes you have like the dad who's like, uh, you know, he kind of goes overboard, you know, and he's like that type of parent, you know, who like he's at the games and he's doing too much and shit like that um, because they want their kid to be this star athlete and things like that. Because what ends up happening is they end up trying to take credit for the fact that, you know, they were there to cheer that kid on and all this other stuff. So then that kid feels indebted to that parent and they're going to basically take care of them when they basically turn old and gray. But again, it was on a whim because they weren't really sure whether or not they were going to be successful or not. But they pushed them so that eventually when they were successful, they would come back and they would bring all that money back to the family. The, I find these Negroes to be total failures because the reality is, is that you should have your money up or your finances up or at least your business savvy up so that you can pass it down to your kid. You shouldn't have to wait for your kid to be successful and then bite off of them. And the fucked up thing about Simone Biles' raggedy ass mama is she's trying to bite off of her and she didn't do a goddamn thing. She didn't raise her. I mean, this woman was on drugs. I mean... She gave her up. I mean, the story was just crazy. And here she is trying to get attention off of her success. Because the reality is, is that we didn't hear nothing from her for real, for real, up until Simone Biles got all of this recent newfound success in the media and with all the accomplishments that she made. And I'm going to be honest with you. I think a lot of the spectators who are seeing the things that uh, Simone Biles' mother is doing are just dumb as hell. They're really playing into her manipulation. And that's part of what the Shea Butter Mama does. She is a master manipulator. When she can't get what she wants, she manipulates her kids or the people who are around her, her progeny in order for her to be able to have some level of success or to be able to have some type of benefit, even if she has no involvement in the success of that kid. And this is exactly what she's doing because her thing is, well, if Simone doesn't want to have contact with me and she doesn't want to forgive me and then I, she comes and she like helps take care of me and all this other stuff and brings us back to the family, even though, you know, she didn't raise me and all that. I'm going to find a way to insert myself into the shit that she's doing. That's exactly what she's doing right now. And I don't fuck with that because the reality is, is that a lot of people are dumb because they're thinking that when she is crying on not even crying but whining on social media about how you know her um you know she was on drugs you know she wants to she also said she's always going to be on drugs she even made that statement as well too which i found to be interesting and she was talking about how like you know when simone is ready you know she can come to me and you know we can kind of basically um you know kind of bury the hatchet and all this other stuff so she's trying to basically make it seem like you know she um, is leaving the door open for Simone to come Simone Biles to come to her but the funny thing is is that she never even really reached out to her although she has her contact information and she knows how to reach her also Simone has made it clear that she doesn't really want to have a relationship with her for real for real like that as well too so her mother at this point is trying to leech on to trying to you know get some success off of the fact that Simone basically was successful and in the process, she's also, in a way, demonizing Simone as somebody who is bitter, who is hateful, and cannot move on from the past. And people are just dumb as hell, and they're buying right into it. And then you have Ricky Smiley's old buttermilk biscuit cooning ass over here talking about some, 
Um, well, I had a similar situation and, uh, you know, my, um, you know, like I, I, I forgave my, 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 uh, my people for what they did and all this other stuff. And what, what that made me realize is that a lot of people will project when it comes to when you have issues with any family member, especially a parent, people love to project. They love to take their personal situations and how they handled them or how they chose to excuse certain behaviors, which is why I think I've talked about this before. I'm not fully for the whole forgiveness movement that people are on. And I talked about this on threads recently. Um, you know, I think that people do that and they expect other people to move in the way that they moved as well, too. So the thing is, is that Ricky Smiley is kind of in that like that old nigga um, kind of um, like mentality as well, too. So it doesn't surprise me that he is, in, in, in my opinion, kind of siding with the mom and kind of throwing a little bit of shade at Simone Biles for not being forgiving. So, um, you know, that that's why I feel that this is one of those things that the, the Shea Butter Mama tries to do. They try to leech on to their um, their kid and with the the women, especially like with their daughters, they express some level of jealousy. They're jealous almost that, you know, their daughter has this level of success and they try to leech onto them as a result. And then when they're raising them, they're also mistreating them in the process. And the thing is, is that when it comes to um, going back to the Ricky Smiley thing, one of the things that I noticed that he said was that, um, you know, she made the best decision you know, by putting Simone in a different situation. So she should be honored basically for that. And I'm looking back and I'm like, you don't get brownie points because you chose to have a kid. You're the one who chose to bring a kid into this world. And then you gave them up because you weren't an adequate mother to take care of a kid that you chose to have. You don't get brownie points for that. And you sure as hell shouldn't have people making excuses for you. Because I'll tell you what, if you were young, you wouldn't have all those excuses made for you. And that's why I've said to y'all before, there are a lot of privileges to parenthood that really shouldn't be there. A lot of excuses get made. A lot of bullshit gets said. And that's why I think that this whole forgiveness movement, when it comes to the whole parent thing, I think that is very jaded. I think it's shady. I think it's disingenuous. I think it's fake. I think it's phony. And I think people are full of shit. I'm just being totally honest with you. When somebody like Simone Biles has made it clear whether or not she does or does not want to have a relationship with her mother, in this case doesn't, she made it clear that she's good. And that was her way of moving on. What a lot of you Negroes like to do, and this is the problem with y'all, is you don't want somebody to just forgive that person for what they've done. You also want them to reconnect. And you don't have to reconnect with something that broke you, hurt you, or did something to you that wasn't favorable or, con or is toxic. You do not have to reconnect with it. Because the reality is, and this is the reason why y'all use a lot of the excuses you all use. You all do it because... You all just don't want to hear about the negativity. So you feel like the best way for you to not hear about it is to give some condescending, passive aggressive advice to people about how they should forgive certain people in certain situations and things like that. In this case, their parents, because you really don't have you really don't want to hear what that person has to say. And I, I recently made a post on threads and the post that I made on threads basically was me saying in so many words that. I'm not really for this whole forgiveness movement. The reason why I'm not really for the whole forgiveness movement is because it seems very fake. It seems very phony. It seems very disingenuous. And a lot of the talking points that are used for forgiveness are based in isolation. And what I mean by that is a lot of the talking points isolate the individual who was the quote unquote victim further than uh, the the person who actually had done wrong to them had already done. So in other words, you have this one person who was treated ill by somebody. So they already have been treated ill and then they go to somebody else and then they say, hey, that ain't got nothing to do with me. That's all on you. So that's what I mean by isolation. So all advice basically comes from that regard. And I'm not saying that there's no truth to some of the advice that's given, but I think it misses the point. I think that people should be able to feel their pain. 
they also should be able to give people accountability for whenever they do things that are wrong or do things that are hurtful. And if they are toxic, they are not willing to change, etc., then those people need to be dropped like a bad habit. And so what happens is the people who hear about these different issues, because a lot of times they'll ask these, you know, about people's relationships, even when they know they're shaky. You, know, you don't know if somebody, when they have issues with people, are, have already forgiven somebody. But the thing is, is that if you hear about it, you ask about it, and they tell you that this stuff is it's not cool, I'm, I'm not really in the best space with this person. I mean, like, you know, I forgave them, but, you know, I really don't want to rock with them. Here you go saying you haven't fully forgiven. Tell them, they'll start giving them little speeches about how, oh, you's got to forgive, not for them, but for you. And I hear that saying all the time. Something really has never really sat right with me about it. And I think the thing that, that doesn't sit right with me about it is it's this kind of fake sanctimoniousness that kind of goes behind it. The reality is, is that people should be able to forgive at their own pace and it is their business. And you don't really have the right and it's not your place to tell them how they should forgive. And the, the reality is, is that the only reason why you're even giving advice in the first place is because you just don't want to hear about the shit no more. You don't want to hear about strife. You don't want to hear about issues. You just apparently live under a rock where people just don't have issues with other people and everything is just jolly la la land. You know, you, you live in some type of um, silly bitch world. So um, but I think the point that I'm trying to make is that um, I don't I can't really totally get behind it because I think that it doesn't create a space for that person to feel supported and understood and heard. And it also creates a haven for excuse making. And that's what I don't like about it. You know, like I said before, I have no problem with the whole dwelling aspect, not dwelling on something, not looking and thinking about something too much and, and things like that. But what I'm not for is the the idea that the person who is giving this advice is being disingenuous. That's why, you know, I, I say like the disingenuousness is from not just like what is the intent behind the advice, but also the things that they are not saying about what they're thinking. One of them being, well, you know, I just don't want to hear it. And the second thing being that not only do they want you to forgive, they also want you to forget and reconnect. And because they know that if you reconnect, then that strife just won't be there at all. Right. So I think that that's one of the, the problems that I tend to see is that they still they want you to forgive, forget and reconnect. And that's not necessary, especially because something that broke you is toxic and that type of thing. All they have to say, if they really are truly supportive, is whenever if you have not forgiven, take the time that you need to be able to do that, but also I validate that your feelings are valid and I understand why you would feel that way based on what was said, as long as what is being said actually is valid. The other problem that I have is that they'll also make up excuses and they'll say stuff like, well, you have to think about how you're complicit. And even when people say shit like that, I'm thinking like, I know one damn thing. If I am robbed, the weight of somebody holding a gun up to me and robbing me is not the same level of accountability deserved for me being in a vulnerable state where I'm about to pull money out of my wallet where somebody may have seen it. So in other words, you may feel that I'm at fault because I was flashing my money because I had it out while I was counting it in public. And you may feel I'm at fault for that. But me doing that is not the same level of fault as somebody holding a gun to me and saying, give me your shit. It's not the same. I think people just come up with excuses because they just don't really know what the fuck to say. So y'all always come up with some shit in order to even out the fact that somebody has messed up because what it ends up doing is it deflects from someone being able to give that person accountability. Forgive or to forgive, if you look it up, means to excuse. I don't believe in excusing people. I believe in moving forward. I believe in not dwelling on things, but I do not believe in excusing people and excusing them from their behaviors when they're bad. Um, and in the case of Simone, it's clear that she's trying to distance herself from something that is toxic in this case. And then her raggedy ass, gate mouth, jagged gate mouth ass sister decided to kind of pop in as well too and reveal herself because 
you know, we never seen her ass before either and talk about, you know, how well that's her opinion if that that's how she feels. But, you know, people make mistakes, yada, yada, yada. So this little bitch is on the excuse train as well, too. And the reality is, is that she's buying into that same thing. She's trying to bite off of Simone's success in the same way her mother is. See how that worked right there? The Shea Butter Mama by Simone Biles' mother example is teaching her daughter how to literally use trying to grab attention as a tactic to bite off of somebody's success in order to create their own success. And you can kind of see that from her also making remarks as well, too. It's like they're trying to make themselves relevant and then stay relevant at the same time as well, too, because it's like, where the fuck you pop up from? You know what I'm saying? Because before that, I mean, like you was on there. You was you was out here on drugs and shit. You wasn't worried about what was going on with Simone. You was worried about you. So the reality is, is that she is a shea butter mama because she doesn't really care about reconnecting so much as she does to reconnect, reconnecting because that's her daughter so much as reconnecting because of the fact that she believes that she can get some type of success, can create some type of brand, can create some type of um, notoriety from the fact that she called out Simone for not necessarily being forgiven, for forgiving and wanting to reconnect with her. And that's why I said that the problem with a lot of you all is that you are buying right into her manipulation because she's even manipulating everybody else who's watching it so that they think that there is something okay with what she's doing at the end of the day though that's why i can't stand the whole that's your mama that's your daddy crowd because what they are purposefully from my perspective choosing to ignore is that a lot of those people who that child had to distance themselves with into their adulthood are master manipulators and they're in my opinion enabling that and gaslighting an individual who has gone through things simply because they don't want to hear it or be a part of it. And a lot of times these are the niggas that are asking and butting in someone's business. Because the reality is, is that when it comes to the whole thing with Simone Biles, a lot of people are commenting on what the mother did. Simone Biles is not out here talking about all of her issues with her mom and all this other stuff. It may get brought up and she may answer a question, but she's not out here complaining online and all this other shit. So the reality is that she made her decision and she did what was best for her. And here this raggedy ass hag is trying to literally bite off of her because she knows that she is a success and she sees her as a gold mine. Her mama seen dollar signs because ultimately that's what the Shea Butter Mama wants. She wants some type of get back. She feels like whatever happened to her in the past, there needs to be some type of compensation for it, whether it's because a man let her down or because life let her down. Either way, she feels that she needs to have some type of get back. And if that means that she has to get it off of her kid, she's going to do it just in the same way that an old nigga does to a kid who they want to be a star football player and later come back and feed the whole family. Anyway, y'all, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you enjoyed what I had to say. I definitely will have more to come, so stay tuned. Other than that, I will be talking to y'all later. Peace.